Hey guys, so previously we actually did a standard deck together and I wanted to share the results with you and some of the stuff I learned. I really do like the concept of changing my deck based on the FNM and sharing it with you. So today, I FNM, I actually went, what did I go? I went, I won my first two, I lost my third game to ramp, goggle ramp, and which I just was vastly unprepared for. And then that was it. So. This is the deck. So this is the basis of the deck I have. Four reality smashers. Uh, one of, I mean, just very difficult to deal with. I believe it is a problem though, because I just don't get to five easily. Two Pierre and Kiara Note Lars. And this card is, I actually had to add a card in. Because I did trade for my West Vale Abbeys. So this card, autom it, it pretty much triggers your West Vale Abbey because you have a lot of token producers. And yeah, so I should just leave these up. Uh, Abbot of Carol Keep is very good. It's, I play, I always play on turn. I don't play on turn two, because that would be silly. I play on turn three and hope I hit a land or, you know, everything else is extremely cheap in this deck. For Ofer Chandra, this is the best burn spell we have, and it's really sad that we have to play this like it, but it is the best burn spell and has limited, if no upside in this particular deck. Uh, Hanging Back Walker is very, very good, and then R1 drops Lightning Berserker, love it. Um, Zergo, uh, Village Messenger is a very interesting card. I do want to talk a tiny bit about Village Messenger. Oh, and this is like... This is the Chandra Suite, which I am getting rid of because it's not really budget. So we'll put that aside. Uh, maybe if you want to make the more expensive version. Village Messenger is very, very good. You need as many one drops as possible because your end goal is to sacrifice two Ds as a you know last ditch. If you get to six lands and you can, if you get to six lands and you still haven't won, it's, Unlikely you're going to finish your opponent, so you sack all these little creatures and then you flip over to a 9-7 and that 9-7 has lifelink, indestructible, flying, and haste. So yeah, I will definitely win you the game. I very much undervalued how strong this card was, but now I really get it. I totally get it. Oh, and then the other cards we have, again, I might not have 60 cards, but uh, Dragon Fodder. Actually, I think what I wanted to do after tonight was replace the Carol Keeps with Dragon Fodder because Westvale Abbeys are just so good as an end game. Like they're much better than Chandra because Chandra doesn't really, I mean, she produces those uh, elemental tokens, but they don't really have flying and they're not as big as the 9-7. So yeah, and then the four goblin. So here's kind of a additional thing about the deck. So we have the mountains. So we're running four battlefield forges, four reefs, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen. So a total of twenty-one lands, and then the Westvale Abbey's twenty-one plus twenty-three lands with the two Westvales, and the Westvales are very good because they also help your Adrazi calls. Now the sideboard is t should be another one of these. I love this card. I think it's just so good in this type of deck. It gives you the gas you need and it fits perfectly in the curve. Oh yeah, of course, duh. I forgot about this dude. So yeah, I'm, I'll grab a four one. You do have four of these and this is the best card in the deck. Uh, this is primarily why you play Adrazi's and to begin with, uh, it is just that good. I like it a lot. It wins me game after game after game. It reminds me, it reminds me of another four casting cost card called uh, Rhino, and that Rhino it was so dominant. Um, I see this as extremely dominant too. You take away their best card, and then you challenge them with a four four on turn four, and next turn you throw out a Reality Smasher. It's just very difficult to deal with that much power. Uh, Impulse, really for just Jace. Uh, volleys are very good. I love the Volleys. Roast, and then Obligator. 
those are my sideboard options. I haven't really fixed the sideboard yet. What I found is that for control decks, this deck is really good because your one drops get there before they really do too much and you can do about 10 points of damage and then finish them off. So your Reality Smaster and your Thought Not Seer, they are in your uh, Dragon, they're your big finishers. And if they get a hit in, you can probably finish them easily. So as long as they can hit your opponent once, you pretty much have the game locked down uh, from the early game. Now, the decks that you have trouble with are the ramp decks. And it sounds kind of ridiculous that you have trouble on the ramp decks, but they have ways of massive creature removal. So if you commit to the board and you're trying to get to turn six with your West Vale Abbey or trying to play your Reality Smasher, trying to save your lower creatures, then and they board wipe with a Languish or a... Um, What's the other one? There's the one with angels that people are playing right now. It board wipes and then you get an angel. And then there's also the one um, that just board... Just any board wipe is very bad against this deck. You're essentially white weenies except in red. Uh, but you do have outs. Reality Smasher has won so many games out of nowhere for me. And this is definitely a deck I would advise you look at. Uh, because it's relatively inexpensive if you are not playing the Chandras or the other Chandras, the big Chandras or the small Chandras, it's not that expensive of a deck to make, uh, which is really, really good. And because standard, I, I feel like a lot of times it changes. I believe this deck has staying power. So even when Eldritch Moon comes out, it's not actually going to be helped by that um, set very much, but it doesn't really need that much help because I think the Adrazis just push it enough that it is... Um, it's going to survive, survive the next set. Anyway, bye guys.